hi, it's story time and singing time. And I have my little lamb. So I'm going to sing a song that I think lots of you know, but it's changed the words a little bit. Ba, ba, white sheep, have you any wool? Yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am, three bags full. One for your sweater, one for your rug, and one for your blanket to keep you nice and snug. Ba, ba, white sheep, have you any wool? Yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am, three bags full. Oh, I didn't know wool came from you. So this is my wool sweater. It's nice and soft, but it's brown, so we dyed it brown. So now let me find my friend, Red Hen. Here's Red Hen. Red Hen, Red Hen, have you any eggs? Yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am, as many as your legs. Oh, I've got two legs. One for your breakfast and one for your lunch. Come back tomorrow, I'll have another bunch. Cluck, cluck, red hen, have you any eggs? Yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am, as many as your legs. How many legs do I have? Two, that means you had two eggs. Cluck, cluck. Okay, so now, oh, who's this? Our cow. Moo, moo, black and white cow, have you any milk? Yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am, as tasty as can be. Churn it into butter, make it into cheese, freeze it into ice cream, or drink it if you please. Moo, moo, black and white cow, have you any milk for me? Yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am, as tasty as can be. Now, I just have to stop for one second to say on farm week, I usually bring in cream, like the 35% cream. We put it in a jar and we shake it. Everybody has a shake. We see the changes and guess what it changes into? Changes into butter. It's really fun to do. And then we usually spread it on a cracker and taste it and we can't believe how dish delicious it is. So if you're so inclined, you can get some milk and you shake it and we go, come butter, come, come butter, come. Shake it up and shake it down, come butter, come. And then the leftover that's left between the butter and the cream, that's called the buttermilk. And I usually make buttermilk pancakes at home. So just a little extra that we would do if we were at school, but we're not. Oh, here's B. Buzz, buzz, busy bee, is your honey sweet? Yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am, sweet enough to eat. Honey on your muffin, honey on your cake. Honey by the spoonful, as much as I can make. Buzz, buzz, busy bee, is your honey sweet? Yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am, sweet enough to eat. Well, that was nice. Did you like that song? I think you know it. We'll have to do that every day. Now, let's get ready for the barnyard dance. Do you remember we did that yesterday? So stand up. The barnyard dance is about to begin. So hitch up your pants. That means pull them up and jump right in. Pick the apples. So can you reach and pick your apples and husk the corn? Peel off the green. Crow with the rooster in the early morn. Cock-a-doodle-doo. Bow to your partner <laughs> and wave hello. Clap your hands and tap your toes. Feed the chickens, milk the cow, hoe the weeds and begin to plow. The barnyard dance has come to the end. So kick up your heels and start again. Nice. That was really good. Okay, so here we go round the big red barn, the big red barn, the big red barn. Here we go round the big red barn so early in the morning. Here's our cow. This is the way we milk the cows, milk the cows, milk the cows. This is the way we milk the cows in the big red barn. Now if you want to churn butter, you put some cream in a glass jar and you shake. 
This is the way we make the cream, make the butter, make the butter, make the butter. This is the way we make the butter in the big red barn. It takes about 20 minutes. That's why in a class of 16, it's perfect. This is the way we feed the chickens. So give them some grain. Feed the chickens, feed the chickens. This is the way we feed the chickens so early in the morning. This is the way, oh, can we give the sheep a shear? Get your scissors. We have to cut them to get the wool. This is the way we shave the sheep or shear the sheep, shear the sheep, cut, shear the sheep. This is the way we shear the sheep in the big red barn. This is the way we feed the pigs, get them some slop, feed the pigs. Do you know they'll eat anything, those pigs? Feed the pigs. This is the way we feed the pigs so early in the morning in our big red barn. So let's do our um, chick little song again with our red barn. Let me get my red barn. That's what we painted for art yesterday, wasn't it? Okay, and let me find my chickies. Here they are. All right. So we're not going to read the words. You can read them as I do it. This little chick is black. She's feeling sad and wearing a frown. Oh no, this, I just said it wrong. Right. This little chick is black. She stands in the barnyard on a big hay stack. So black and stack rhyme. This little chick is brown. She's feeling sad and wearing a frown. This little chick is yellow. She's friends with the rooster. He's a handsome fellow. This little chick is white. She dances and plays. Oh, what a sight. This little chick is purple. She spends her days running around in a circle. This little chick is green. She's the prettiest chick I've ever seen. This little chick is blue. She lays eggs for me and you. This little chick is pink. She goes down to the pond to get a drink. All these chicks live in the farm, out in the big red barn. Now we're gonna have a story. And the story today is called The Little Red Hen. So I've got lots of hen stories, and guess what? I've got puppet faces today too. So we're going to look at the pictures, but I'm also going to talk like I'm the puppet. So let's see who's in the story. So this is the old mill here. Okay. So we've got once upon a time, there was a little red hen who shared her tiny cottage with a goose. Our goose looks like a duck. A cat. Meow. And a dog. Woof, woof. So let's see what happens. The goose was a gossip. All day long, she chatted with her neighbors. Oh, did you know they're down the street? Those kids are out playing. So all she does is talk, talk, talk. The cat was very vain. Meow. She brushed her fur. Meow. She straightened her whiskers. Meow. And she polished her claws all day long. So she just thinks about herself. She doesn't think about anybody else. That's all she does. And the dog was always sleepy. I think his name was Reggie. <laughs> he napped on the front porch swing all day long. There he is sleeping. The little red hen Oops, here she is. Ended up doing all of the work around the house. She cooked. She cleaned. She washed her clothes. She took out the garbage. 
She mowed the lawn and raked the leaves. She even did all of the shopping. So she's busy, busy, busy. Oh, all I do is work, work, work. I like working. One morning on her way to market, the little red hen found a few grains of wheat. She put them in the pouch of her apron. When she got home, she asked her friends, who will help me plant these grains of wheat? So she says, who's gonna help me? Meow, not I, said the cat. Meow, or no, woof woof, not I, said the dog. And honk honk, not I, said the goose. So they're not going to help her. Then I will plant it myself, said the little red hen. And she did. So look, she got her shovel, she dug the hole, and she planted them. When the grains of wheat began to sprout, the little red hen cried, oh, Look, the wheat I planted is coming up. Who will help me take care of it this summer? Not I, said the goose. Not I, said the dog. Not I, said the cat. See, there they are. They're not going to help her. Then I will take care of it myself, said the little red hen. And she did. All summer long, she cared for the growing wheat. She made sure it got enough water, and she hoed the weeds out carefully between each row. By the end of the summer, the wheat had grown tall. And when it turned from green to gold, she called her friends, who will help me thresh and cut this wheat? Who's gonna help me? Well, not I, meow, said the cat. Not I, woof woof, said the dog. Not I, said the goose. Honk honk. Oh dear. Then I will cut and thresh it myself, said the little red hen. And she did. When all of the wheat had been cut and threshed, that's what threshing looks like, the little red hen scooped the wheat into a wheelbarrow and said, this wheat must be ground into flour. Who will help me take it to the mill? <laughs> not I, meow, said the cat. Woof, woof, not I, said the dog. Honk, honk, not I, said the goose. Then I will take it myself, said the little red hen, and she did. The miller ground the flour and put it into a bag for the little red hen. Then all by herself, she pushed the bag home in the wheelbarrow. One cool fall morning, not many days later, the little red hen got up early and said, today would be a perfect day to bake some bread. Who will help me bake a loaf of bread with the flour I brought home from the mill? Woof, woof, not I, said the dog. Meow, not I, said the cat. Not I, said the goose. Look, they're just all being lazy bones, not getting out of bed. Then I will bake the bread myself, said the little red hen, and she did. She mixed the flour with milk and eggs and butter and salt. She kneaded the dough and she shaped it into a nice plump loaf. Then she put it in the oven and watched it as it baked. The smell of the baking bread soon filled the air. It smelled so delicious that the goose stopped chatting, the cat stopped brushing, and the dog stopped napping. One by one, they came into the kitchen. When the little red hen took out the freshly baked loaf of bread out of the oven, she said, who will help me eat this bread? <gasps> oh, I will, said the goose. And I will, said the cat, meow. 
And I will, said the dog, woof, woof. <gasps> you will, said the little red hen. Who planted the wheat and took care of it? I did. Who cut the wheat? Who threshed it and took it to the mill? I did. Who brought the flour home and baked this loaf of bread? I did. I did it all by myself, and now I'm going to eat it by myself. And that's exactly what she did. The end. So they didn't, they didn't help her, so she wasn't going to share anymore. She got to eat it. Now again, just a suggestion. Sometimes when we do this story at school, we buy the, the frozen bread that you can watch, the children can watch it rise, and we bake it while we're doing the story, and then we all get a taste afterwards. Or if you're really fancy and you know how to bake your own bread, it's a fun thing to do. So you could always bake bread or just make toast. And as well, because we have these little masks, I get the children to act out the story after we've told it, and everyone has fun playing the different parts. So just part of our um, learning at school and acting out and role playing. So I don't know if you have a big family, you can maybe try and do something like that too. Just extending the ideas, giving it different solutions of things to do on your days off. All right, so I will see you later. And if you want to join me for art, you can in a few minutes.